prep facts, bareback backed, and butt sex <laughs> hacked. Oh. Coming up today on the point. That is a Damn lot. It. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Point, the only talk show bringing gay and straight men together to see what happens. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 Zaid and uh, Doug are both still away, off on their honeymoon. romantic honeymoon. cruise. Honeymoon. Yeah, yeah. Lover's holiday. Yep. Um, but um, we have back with us. Yeah. YouTuber hello, Adam, Adam hello. Carroll. Hello, 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 yeah. hello. Hello. And also, um, a friend of the show, but we haven't seen you in a while, so we're glad to have you back, Dr. Michael Fanous. Hello. Hey, hello. hello. Thanks for How having are we doing? me back. Good. How are you? Good. Um, and we're going to get into it with you in a bit, but first, I want because we're coming up to um, Passover and Easter, so I thought it was appropriate that I wear my juicy shirt. <laughs> juicy fruit. You're a juicy fruit. <laughs> you said it already. <laughs> Talking point number one, prepped and ready. Okay, so Michael um, is our um, prep, prep expert, prep expert. Meds expert. Meds expert. Thanks for um, I, I, we talked, uh, the last few times you've been on the show talking a lot about prep and what's happening with that. You're a pharmacist. I am. You're an activist. I am. Um, but uh, we had been in contact in terms of uh, that there have been new developments on the the sort of the prep front and other things happening in terms of um, HIV and uh, so tell us what's what's going on. So since I uh, last saw you on the season finale last season, uh, there was big news, but I hinted to it and we talked about it in the question and answer period about Health Canada approving the first generic for prep here in Canada. So the medication, which is the long name is emtricitabine tenofovir. Those are the two Isn't drugs. Tight? Yeah, <laughs> those are the two drugs that were in Truvada, but Truvada was really expensive, still is. And Health Canada, similar to the FDA in the United States, approved a generic for sale. Uh, the FDA, though they approved it in the United States, it's not going to come to market for legal reasons till 2021. But Health oh. Canada, yeah. But Health Canada brought ours, approved it, and it's sold here in Canada now for a fraction of the cost of Truvada. Uh, all the generics in Canada are tested for safety and efficacy, but also bioequivalence. So the question I get a lot about generics is if they don't cost as much as the brand name, they must not be the, the, the same or the same value or the same quality. But that's not true. So it's exciting to have uh, a lot more people can now access PrEP. So the number one reason why uh, gays, you know, guys in the gay community uh, don't take PrEP, the number one reason is the cost. So it's not the fear, it's not the stigma, it's not the side effects, it's um, unfortunately a lot of people can't afford it. So what we were going to uh, governments with and we were going to public health and the province of Ontario saying uh, this needs to be listed on the formulary. So the other piece of exciting news that came in September of 2017 uh, after the AIDS walk, two weeks after, was that the Ontario government uh, approved PrEP to be included on the formulary, meaning that people that have government coverage, Trillium, ODSP, Ontario Works, uh, OHIP Plus, the Seniors Plan, now they can get PrEP, so it can be funded by the province. Uh, BC also a approved PrEP on their formulary. There, there have been some countries, haven't there been? There's a lot of countries what, now. Australia, am I right? Australia is going to subsidize PrEP. Israel approved it, but doesn't subsidize it yet. Oy. The EU approved it. It's up to every individual country how they're going to fund it. Uh, South Africa. There's a lot of countries that are now getting on board with PrEP because they're realizing it works. And we've known it works, but it was horribly expensive before. And uh, we know that not only is it cheaper to prevent an infection with HIV, with PrEP, but it's also the morally right thing to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can pay, if the governments can get involved to help people access this really effective drug, then we can avoid someone having to take HIV treatment, which is even more expensive for the rest of their life. So mm -hmm. it just makes sense. It's the right thing to do. Uh, I think, you know, Canadians are, we're lucky 
that we're on board with this idea, a lot of other countries are thinking they're still a little behind on where they th what they think about PrEP. I, I, I'm curious um, because I remember when we first started having this discussion, uh, the medical community was saying, yes, be on PrEP, but that's in addition to condoms. Okay. I think there is a realization that by far most men who are taking PrEP are not using condoms. Let's talk about condoms. Uh, even if they are using condoms, think uh, for the gay men on the panel, all the things that we do before we put a condom on, if you do put a condom on, uh, that can transfer bacteria, viruses, parasites. So it's great, you put a condom on, but you know, pre-cum carries the virus as well. So for all those people that you know, have foreplay and think that you know, oh, if I pull out, then you know, there's no risk. Well, that's not necessarily true. And then the whole thing about condomless sex, my thing with it is, yes, people have always been having condomless sex since the dawn of time. And we've had condoms since the AIDS epidemic of the 80s. Why hasn't, you know, why haven't condoms solved that? Why do I still have nearly 2,000 new infections in this country every year? And we've had condoms and they're cheap. They're way cheaper than PrEP. Uh, they're somewhat effective with gay men. Now, we need to remember that Anal sex is tighter than vaginal sex. So condoms will fail. Condoms will burst a lot more often uh, when gay men are having sex or when straights are having anal sex. Um, and we have to know that the reality is not everybody uses condoms all the time. In fact, 85% of gay men well, were, yeah. Well, well, this is why I, I was asking because the, 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 what, at least what I was hearing from the medical community was continue to use condoms because of other STIs. STIs. Yeah, sure, of course. I'm not here to discourage condom use. I'm here to talk about the reality. The reality is I'm like most gay men and a condom is not used 100% of the time. In fact, only 15% of gay men report using a condom every time religiously. And maybe I'll open it up to the panel and ask, you know, how many times in the last three months or six months have you not used a condom during anal sex? Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So well, I mean, no, honestly, less, less. since starting prep, yeah. I. I, I, I'm not as reliant on condoms. All right, so I'm let's, just go, not. let's go back to the reality. My thing is like people are always talking about condoms and how like they can, they, they'll get upset at me if I previously haven't used it with somebody else and they're worried about getting STIs. I'm like, you can get an STI from literally doing anything else. Like you're not just gonna get it from me. From well, me. you can get it from oral sex. Exactly, but they're just like, I had somebody kind of get mad at me over being unprotected with somebody who was on prep because they could have gotten something from me. Were they talking about? Like STI wise. And I'm like, well, you're doing other stuff with other people. You can get it from literally anyone right. getting mad at me for doing something that was safe. So, uh, uh, so I, I mean, to me, this just sounds like prep shaming or. Right, right, it is prep shaming. It's prep shaming, it, we need to oppose it just like we oppose slut shaming. And we just need to oppose that the same way we oppose uh, those that are uh, stigmatizing people who are HIV positive. Mm -hmm. So actually, now that you brought it up, condoms, let's talk about the most effective way to prevent transmission of HIV to somebody else is to treat the person who's HIV positive. I mean, not only do people on treatment do well and they live longer, but we know for a fact from the, from the evidence that we have on some large trials is that if the person who's HIV positive is undetectable, so they're successfully, uh, the treatment is successful, then they will not pass the virus on to sexual partners. That's the most effective way. Second most effective way is PrEP. Third most effective way is condoms. So we need to rework the whole talk about safer sex. Uh, typically, when people come into my office and they say, oh no, I don't need PrEP, I always have safe sex. One, there's no such thing as safe sex. Two, condoms are not as effective at preventing HIV as PrEP, and we do not need to fear those that are HIV positive. If they're positive and undetectable, they're not to be feared. And so, the talk around safer sex practices needs to change and it needs to be in that order. But it also has to do with people like, like somebody says they're undetectable, they could be lying. Somebody says they're on prep and they could be lying. So again, it's kind of like you have to take care of yourself. And decide. Well, yeah, take care of yourself. Right, no, you're like absolutely right. Like either be right. on it or use the condom, it's just kind of like. Right, it's protect yourself, <laughs> yeah. right? Because the other person could be lying or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, why they would be, yeah. The, what, the way I like to frame it is trust is not an effective HIV prevention yeah. strategy. Right. Yeah. And a uh, little known fact is that most people get HIV 
from their primary sexual partner. So if it's their boyfriend or their husband or what have you, um, it's not a random person. It's not someone that you know you want to not trust. It's those that you think you can trust, mm. typically, because then condoms are not yeah. a part of that. Well, but one side of this, there was this article on uh, GayStarNews.com. Uh, uh, Simon Gage um, uh, from UK-based Boys Magazine. Um, oh no, that's he's referring to someone else. Anyway, it, the, the the headline is "Am I a sexual dinosaur because I insist on wearing condoms?" So he's saying he still wants to use condoms. Great, but other guys won't have sex with him because he insists on using condoms. And some people do that. Really? I just find that weird. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, yeah like, t- t- I want I, I to wear a condom. Like, I've had an S- STI or SD. I don't know which one it is. But I've had one. And I took, an like, IUD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe. I don't know. Um, uh, and, like, it took, like, a year to treat that thing. It and then, did? Yeah. Yes, what did you have, bro? Girl? girl, I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> My mama's watching. <laughs> like, it's not, like, it's not fun. And it, it was, I like, condoms are my best friend because I can't afford prep. So, obviously, like I would, if, I would love to take prep and not have to worry about that, but I can't afford to do that. But I would also still be wearing condoms. So, if I may, uh-huh. okay, for prep would not have prevented an STI. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Secondly, uh, just because someone's on prep doesn't mean that they can't use condoms as well. It's not mutually yeah, exclusive. Right. Yes. Third, before I forget, I want him to be able to access prep the same way I want everybody to for free. Uh, Mm -hmm. There should be no reason that someone that wants to be on PrEP in the highest risk category in Canada, so men who have sex with men, and they can't access it because of the price point. So, and then third is common STIs, chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, and HPV are all transferred even when you use a condom. Why? It's skin to skin contact. Unless you're having sex with someone who comes with the condom, comes into the room with the condom on and he's hard and his hands are washed, (laughs) then I'll say, okay, great. I always wash. Imagine that. But (laughs) the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is foreplay, skin to skin contact, all the things that we do prior to putting a condom on, so, you know, oral sex. Wait, all of those are skin to skin? Well, do you, do you, I don't know a gay man who uses a condom for oral sex, and I don't know no, no, of a gay man who uses a dental dam for rimming. But, <laughs> so, if, unless you're doing those, it's skin-to-skin contact. What's a dental dam? Interesting. <laughs> uh, it's like He'll a little, like, after. <laughs> it's a little thing like... Yeah. He'll give you a demo. God bless. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't make sounds. <laughs> He, he knows it because lesbians use them. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's even ask the straight guys on the panel if they use a dental dam for... I don't or, use anything. Okay, no. and you know what? <laughs> there should be no... <laughs> and there should be no shaming with that. So where, where, I, where no, I'm going to go... No, you should shame. <laughs> I don't. Why? I don't. Never. Um, yeah. and, and here's the reason why. Uh, the, the thing with PrEP, I'm happy to see that PrEP is being accepted more in the gay community. There was a lot of opposition. Yeah. I got hate mail initially when PrEP came out. You know, you're Jesus. promoting barebacking. Right. And my answer to that was, uh, it's not barebacking, it's condomless sex, and your mother enjoyed it. So why would I shame gay men? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Clap back. Whoa. And your mother's watching. <laughs> yeah, that's so great. <laughs> Mom, I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And the other th- the piece, the really big exciting news that I want to bring to the table, and I brought it to the AIDS walk and my team, Allies Against Stigma. I mean, we oppose prep shaming, slut shaming, but the bigger piece of news is you equals you. Undetectable equals untransmittable. So that means if someone's undetectable, so HIV positive and taking their meds, untransmittable means they can't pass it on to sexual partners. That's my big message, is that in today's world, the technology is so good with these antiretroviral drugs that the virus won't infect other people just using these drugs. Forget condoms. I mean, if you want to add a condom to the mix, great. But this, there has never been a case of someone on PrEP contracting HIV from someone who's HIV positive undetectable. Uh. Next thing, why are we still criminalizing people who are HIV positive in Canada? So someone could have sex um, and they may or may not disclose their status and now this becomes a legal issue. So w- the bigger piece of news is that finally, the Attorney General has allowed it that if someone is HIV positive and undetectable for six months, they don't need to disclose it. They don't need to disclose if they're using a condom. We're still behind the times in Canada, right. but we're getting there. Right, yeah, we've talked about that on the show as well. I also wanted to bring up, there's this uh, porn actor, Jason Domino, um, and he considers himself a prep activist, and he, his campaign is to stop stigmatizing Barebacking. Um, 
and he he has this website called Porn for Prep, um, and he's saying that he wants to use his platform, his porn platform, to destigmatize bareback sex. All right. Well, we know for <laughs> we know the reality is that. Um, yeah, there has been condomless sex for a long time and a lot of porn studios didn't allow it initially but with uh, greater advances in HIV testing they would test you know performers right before a shoot to make sure they're HIV negative but there are limitations to that too right if someone recently seroconverted they may have a false negative on the test so uh, what PrEP allows is greater protection for porn actors that already were having condomless sex scenes. If you want to take away the stigmatizing from barebacking, stop calling it barebacking. It's condomless sex. I, I agree with it's you. It's sex and the I... way it was invented. All right, and um, we should just stop. You know, people are not always using a condom. Not everyone is going to use one. And if you're not shaming your parents for right. it, then why would you shame your friends? Although my question is, and this might be controversial, but there has been a change in the culture, gay culture, in terms of our relationship to condoms. And you were saying, even if I were on PrEP, I would still want to use a condom. 100%. And, huh? 100%, yeah. Right. And there are times where... I, Sometimes you don't. Yeah, I would like, mm, I don't know what's going on in there. I'd much rather use a condom. But the cult, yeah, you don't know. It's dark. It's... <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I meant the lights are out, um, <laughs> but the, and most of it, I have to say, comes from bottoms. The okay. tops, I find, are, you know, like myself, and I'm okay, like, we can use a condom, but the bottoms are like, there's this, oh, I don't know, fetishizing around. Being um, finished in? Being yeah. bred. Yeah. Um, mm. That has taken over and I, I wonder if the the pendulum has to swing all the way that way to sort of come back to the center where we can have these different tools. I mean, prep is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe we're just going through a kid in the candy store kind of phase. Um, but I wonder how, if you've seen a change in that and how we should sort of navigate that. So uh, there have been shifts in the attitudes toward towards PrEP in Canada and uh, around the world there have been a lot of surveys of gay men and what their attitudes were towards PrEP. But go, going back to condomless sex, about 50% of gay men will easily report in these surveys that they don't use a condom all the time. All right. Um, now we want to reach those people obviously if they're having condomless sex and tell them there's great technology now to prevent an HIV transmission. As for STIs, there will always be STIs, condoms or not. The, the shift back towards, you know, maybe we should use condoms that's not a bad idea either. Initial data showed that PrEP users would be at an increased risk of STIs. Now we're finding out that if we do quarterly testing, so gay men should get tested every three months. Right. Well, that's, I mean, that's, I'm on that regimen, right? I take PrEP and I get tested every three months. Right. And, but a lot don't, right? They don't know that these are the recommendations. They'll may go to their doctor, you know, once a year for their physical. And but get doesn't the doctor have to... Well, that's part of, you know, my job is to make the doctor aware. Uh, doctors outside of urban city centers or outside of the HIV community are clueless on how to treat gay men, right? So they may be doing an HIV test once a year or they might not be doing it at all mm. because they don't know that gay men are 131 times more likely to contract HIV in their lifetime than men who don't have sex with men. And they also don't know that 70% of new infections in this country are men who have sex with men, mm -hmm. are gay men. Uh, these numbers are alarming. They haven't changed in the last decade. I'm ha I will be happy when they do finally come down. But until they do, I'm going to keep on the message that undetectable equals untransmittable. Prep works. And that we shouldn't shame people for the sex that they have. Go to thesexyouwant.ca. Watch some great videos on what all of this means. Prep, PEP, undetectable status. And have the sex you want. And going back to your point about tops and bottoms and who do don't like condoms, Maybe I'll open it up to you guys, and what are reasons why you w wouldn't want to use a condom? Pleasure. Feels pleasure. Yeah, that's it. That, I mean, that's... Oh, really? Pleasure There's... and intimacy. Okay, mm -hmm. I've got a few more. Uh, some people are allergic to latex. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, another one, our tops will find that it constricts blood flow, and so they don't get the same quality erection when using a condom. Bottoms, yeah, pleasure. Intimacy. Exchange of fluids. Uh, the other thing is condoms sometimes... Okay, Michael, you're turning me on. <laughs> That was exactly my purpose. You need to stop. Today. <laughs> and now it's time for Tito's Midpoint. <laughs> All right, on a whole different subject, 
We're playing <laughs> blank point. So I'm going to read a sentence. Blank with a bl point? Point blank. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and there's going to be a blank space in the middle of the sentence, and you have to guess what the Just correct like Taylor word Swift. is. Don't mention her, please. <laughs> and it is all Easter related. Got it? Any Passover related questions? I don't know, maybe. Just, <laughs> just go with it. Okay, another name for Easter Sunday is Blank Day. Feast of the Resurrection. Re yeah, right. Yes. I like, a, I love a good res erection. <laughs> Jesus. So going to like Jesus. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Literally. You will find the blank Easter egg in the world in Beggarville, Canada. Biggest? What's another word for biggest? Largest. Largest. There you go. Well, what's this? It's the same. The biggest I egg. I know. The biggest Easter egg is in yeah. Vigerville? Where's Vigerville? At Quebec. Oh. oh. The world's largest egg is about 31 blank tall. Feet. Correct. Yeah. That's a, that's a large egg. That's <laughs> one big ass egg. <laughs> More than 90 million chocolate blank are manufactured Easter eggs. each year. No, bunnies. Bunnies, bunnies, bunnies. is what I meant. <laughs> Then you would be correct. Yeah. <laughs> what about peeps? We don't know. So we're not talking about peeps. I love peeps. Oh, they're disgusting. Little they're little just like sugar. The little chicks. You have a microwave one? No. Gross. No, but they explode, uh, yeah, right? They yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that on, on an upcoming show. <laughs> the Lent season lasts blank days. The what? 40? Lent? 40. 40. 40 days and 40. 40. What are you giving up for Lent? What are you? Nothing. Condoms? <laughs> <laughs> Sexual partners. Shit, girl. <laughs> <laughs> The Lent season starts on blank Wednesday. Ash. Ash. Ash Wednesday. Which this year also happened to be on... April Fool's, right? No. Wasn't it? No? No, that's Easter. That was, no, yeah, that sorry. was Valentine's Day. No, Valentine's Day. <laughs> was it really? I watched yeah. it. It's a nice piece of ash. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, most God. famous Easter parade is held in blank. Easter Island. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> New York. No, yes. but is it? Is it? Oh, yes. New York like is every, the king of parades. Yeah. Yeah. After blank, Easter is the top selling candy holiday. Christmas. Valentine's Day. Halloween. Ween. Halloween. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We're done. Woo! Oh! Yay. Tito! No peeps, though. No peeps. We did peeps last year. Okay, fine. Thank you, Tito, for today's midpoint. And now it's time for talking point number two, the annals of sex. What is an annal? It's like a, a compendium of information. Ooh, a compendium. So many words. What the hell is a compendium? <laughs> <laughs> a bunch. A bunch. <laughs> well, because it's like an annal is like the review of the year, right? Like annual, uh, annal. But Anal? like the annals of psychology. I thought you were going somewhere else with that, I'm sorry. Well, yeah. we are. Yeah. <laughs> because new research by Bespoke Surgical <laughs> interviewed 300 gay men of different ages about their sex lives. And one of the questions they asked was, how often do you have anal sex? <laughs> <laughs> often. <laughs> I'm sorry, they ask um, gay men this regularly. question? regularly. Yes. How often? What, what? Other, what other kind of, oh, there's like, okay. as oral opposed to oral sex? Oral sex? Yeah. 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 Well, not, or well, how often I know, I know, do you, like, I know. Just go. okay. Like how uh, many times one in, per week? One in six people have <laughs> it less than once a year. <laughs> what? Five in six say they have it at least a few times a year. 24% said a couple times a month. 39% I have it a couple times a week. Yep. Couple times. That sounds about right. And thirteen percent of gay men have anal sex daily. Thirteen percent. They're just going at it like rabbits. Well, they have a Every... really healthy diet, and no, no, the who must has be amazing. the time? <laughs> what? What was penis. that? Sliding out of there. <laughs> <laughs> very hungry, you know. Who has the time to? Ha to you can eat cheese and just not even care. Not don't care. Gay men who <laughs> reply to surveys. Cheese? Wait, what? What? <laughs> They're talking about not being blocked up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cheese does block you up. Exactly. Yeah. But if, so you if you're having, having sex, sex that much every, every day, day, oh, you're yeah. loose, girl. Oh, <laughs> you're <really> loose. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what were you saying? I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> Um, they also asked um, uh, uh, how, who's the top, who's the bottom. 39% um, said they were tops. 
and the rest said they were liars. No. Um, <laughs> 33% said they were versatile, and 29% said they were bottoms. That sound about right? Do you just so the like great majority of them bottom. Do you just like pick? No. You just the, pick well, what you are yeah, and yeah, you just stay with that? One third reverse. No. Huh? Do you just like pick what you want to be and just stay with yeah. that? You're, you're, pretty much. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, you try it. If you don't like to bottom or it's hard for you or you can't, or right. you yeah. then you're either a top or you say you're reverse and you sometimes do it depending on who you're Interesting. Yeah. Well, some, there's, I mean, first of all, you either like it one way or, or the other. Yeah. Some people like it both ways, but some people prefer one way. There's also, I find, uh, a, a psychological or emotional component to being one versus the other, and true that. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, and you can like get you can get off being a bottom. Oh yeah, the prostate is. Uh, oh yeah, 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 you're right. Uh, yes, Sorry, teach us like, about the prostate. <laughs> That's a whole other lesson, yeah. another episode. <laughs> um, they didn't ask how many people are into nipple play. Oh, yeah. Uh, so. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> See you again. Loves us. Um, uh, uh, they also um, asked about um, bottoms preparations. Oh. Oh God. Like wiping. That's a fucking <laughs> like wiping. <laughs> There's a lot more than wiping. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my god, do we need a crash course for or? Yeah. <laughs> 40... I'm okay, thanks. <laughs> a crash course. Forty-two percent of gay men always or frequently use an anal cleanser. Thirty-eight percent rarely or never do, and twenty-one percent sometimes use an anal cleanser. Gay men who have anal sex daily are two times more likely to always use an anal cleansing product. But that's also like not good for your anal mucus to yeah, like clean it every it. day. And yeah. Tito's right. Yeah, yeah. a douching it's every day is not uh, recommended. Unless uh, it's like saline or something, you have to do something different. Well, yeah, there's different liquids to put there because uh, the anal mucosa is useful. It protects us. So right. when, when douching that often, uh, we could be losing the protection that we have. And the rectal walls are not thick, so uh, a hole's not like a vagina. No, you can hear the neighbors through the rectal walls. Um, <laughs> The <laughs> bottom say they use, 25% um, use a water-based enema, 20% uh, use a saline enema, and 18% use a shower adapter. 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 <laughs> 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 enema. With friends like you, who needs enemas? Um, a sex prep can be more about... <laughs> Oh, I just got that. <laughs> so stupid. 78% <laughs> um, uh, of gay men think about hygiene always or most of the time during anal sex. 9% never do. Um, on safe sex, 37% always use a condom when having sex. 21% occasionally do. 16% never do. And 41% of gay men have experienced tearing or other damage from anal sex. Damn. Uh, honey, let me not tell you. This survey was taken in jail. 55% uh, use sex toys for... Uh, Prepping? Huh? Prepping? No, for pleasure. 55% for use... You use toys use, to prep? Use sex toys. Okay, all right. Good to I know. know, I'm just saying some people... 45% do not use sex toys. There you go. Well, yeah, sometimes people are just like, no, I want the real thing. I'm just like, I want to do other stuff to you. But if you're doing it every day, who has time for the toys? <laughs> I know. Maybe really. they only no, have time for the toys. No, you'd think you'd have more time yeah. for toys if you're doing yeah. it every day. Oh, maybe. Right? Yeah. Or, you know, just do the ventriloquist method. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Drink some water. <laughs> that's not for everyone. <laughs> no. That's, that sounds like one of those medication commercials. Fisting may not be right for you. Yeah. <laughs> Ask your doctor or pharmacist. <laughs> Side effects include <laughs> anal tearing. No. Um, so, Easy pooping. so what's the bottom line um, before we go? What should people know right now about what's going on in terms of HIV prevention? There's a lot of exciting news with HIV prevention. You can prevent HIV with a pill a day. You don't need to fear people who are HIV positive and undetectable. Uh, the exciting news is that we have more technology than what condoms gave us previously, and we hope to see a huge decline in new HIV infections when we can scale these things up in our country. Even if it's not for you, we want you to come and support it. Allies Against Stigma is a team that is the largest team in this city that walks to promote HIV prevention and to decrease the stigma 
with both HIV positive people and guys on PrEP. Have you noticed a drop, like a decline yet? Or is there, is it, has it not been a long enough time period yet? In ca so Health Canada just approved PrEP two years ago, okay. this month, so it's, uh, so or, uh, in February rather, two, two years prior in 2016, and it's too early to tell. But in cities where PrEP has been available for a while, San Francisco, mm -hmm. London, UK, it's a 50% decline wow. in that first year. Wow. So That's imagine crazy. in Canada, we have nearly 2,000 people every year get HIV. Half of them are in this province. 70% of them are gay. I would love to say next year, if you invite me back on this show, of course. I'd, like to, I'd like to have numbers that are half or less than what we currently have. And I have a question. Okay, <clears throat> quick. Is there ever, like, is there going to be a point in which it will be free for everyone in Canada at some well, point? Well, in BC it is. So it's up to every province to list it. Well, so in I, Ontario. It's so in Ontario, no, it's not. It, it's 100% free for people on OHIP Plus, so 24 and under. Uh, Ontario works. Certain people, they get it 100%. But what we want is everybody that's at high risk of HIV, condoms or not, we want them to have access to free PrEP. What about women? Well, yeah, there are high-risk women. It's not just gay men that are. I know that. I know that, and I've had women ask me that question. I have how straight women never, on prep. Yeah, how come I've never heard of this? Well, they should, and certain high-risk groups, so communities of color, IV drug users, people who are dating someone who's HIV positive, these are all high-risk people we need to go to and tell them about PrEP. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in the scale-up, we need public health to help with this messaging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need sex education in schools, and we need governments to get involved. It's not enough for you know Toronto's uh, gay pharmacist to be on TV <laughs> and talk about it. We need every doctor, yeah, so every people pharmacist. people literally have no idea what it is. Like, no. I, I, I wouldn't have known tell every on single yeah. like, friend of mine yeah. who's straight like, what I, it is. Yeah. I didn't know you could be HIV and undetectable like that I like a few months like I found that out like a few months ago like I didn't know that was a thing yeah like I didn't know it's like a that's a big thing th that's now. like yeah. yeah like but like that's why we need there's a lot of education educating to be done and Michael yes. I'm glad you're here to help um, if people have questions or want to get in contact with you, how do they do that? So I uh, am at Meds Expert on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Meds Ex Expert is also opening its location in Toronto's Gay Village uh, this month. Uh, you can come get free information. You can check out the information online at medsexpert.ca. And uh, the sexyouwant.ca is great for some uh, resources and videos. There are some hot videos on there. There too. are. There are. <laughs> and Adam. Yes. You have a book to promote. I do! Okay, so this is my book. It's called Ponds of Blood and Thunder. You guys should totally check it out. You can get it on Amazon.com or uh, for a paperback, or you can go to um, like iBooks, Kindle, uh, Kobo, all these really cool, uh, yeah. <laughs> Words. All these really Words. cool, <laughs> all these, really all these cool, cool, yeah. Uh, distributions and right types. Nice speaker. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, you should totally go check it out. If you like Hunger Games Divergent, it's totally up your alley. Cool. Um, thank you for joining us. Of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by pressing the red button. Costs you nothing, helps us greatly. Of course, we also have the audio version, the podcast on iTunes. Look for us there. You can check us out, of course, on Reverie, reverie.tv, the world's largest online LGBTQ streaming service. Check us out there as well as all their great original content. If you really want to help us, please go to our crowdfunding site, Patreon, patreon.com slash thepointguys. Of course, you can email us here to comment or ask questions about anything that we've talked about on the show today, thepointguys at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and the Insta at thepointguys. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Thank everybody else. Thank Great. you. Thank you. We have a new show every Tuesday. Oh, actually, before I do that... I have to say that we are taking a week off because of Easter and Passover. Just we're like so your midpoint. Oh my god. Just like your midpoint. Okay. So we're gonna have a, <laughs> So we're gonna have a beside the point next week, and then we'll be back with regular episodes of the week after that. So programming note. There you go. Amazing. <laughs> Great. But we do have a new show every Tuesday. Right? So, so. Even if it's beside the point. It's true. So yeah. we will see you, see you next, next Tuesday, Tuesday. <laughs> on the point.